Welcome to the On Deck Podcast for all your baseball DFS needs with your superstar hosts, fantasy baseball experts, Casey Bubba and Bogman. On Deck Podcast is sponsored by Line Star App, the number one top rated data and analytics tool for daily fantasy sports. That's right. The number one data tool for fantasy sports, Line Star. Go to the Line Star app, but we'll get to that in a minute. You can find me on Twitter at Pediatric and the other guy on the screen because you can watch it on YouTube, folks. Go check Try. it out, Line Star's YouTube channel. He's on Twitter at Bogman Sports. How are we doing, Bogman? You, it's good. You can see how out of control my beard is getting uh, every single day. It's gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get in there and trim it up. So getting a little unruly, starting to look a little homeless-ish right now. So we got to clean it up. It's okay. It's a uh, Sergio Romo shaved. You can too. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's all good. That scared me. As long hey, as man, Brian Rudy. Wilson doesn't, right? That, yeah. That's the only guy that can't. So yeah, Sergio and uh, and Rudy Odor in the same week shaved, and I don't know what to do with with my my <laughs> thoughts. I'm keeping to myself. Well, but, Charlie Blackman um, it, hasn't, so we're good. You know. Thank goodness he can never get traded to the Yankees. Just to put it that way, never. Ooh, yeah. Wouldn't be allowed. So good thing he's but, past uh, his prime. <laughs> well, we're here to uh, preview the Thursday, April 15th slate of action. Looking back on Wednesday's uh, slate, Bogman, we are just around two weeks into the season, give or take. And we just saw our second no hitter with Carlos Rodon, who not too long ago was questioning if he'd even be in the big leagues this season because of all the injuries he's had. It's been a cool story. The interviews I've seen, like he's holding back tears when he cry- talks. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome to see what took place. I mean, it was awesome. Like you said, you know, anytime you see a young man like that, go out and get one, uh, a no hitter. It's really cool to see. And, you know, I just, he had the bubble guts and hot snakes the other day. And I thought, well, since he was sick, I kind of want to avoid him because who knows, you know, I've been, I've, I've had food poisoning to where like, it took me like three or four days to recovery to recover. So I thought maybe his recovery is going to take a little long. Obviously, you know, whatever he ate a couple days ago, he needs to eat, uh, you know, two to three days before every start from now on because uh, he looked absolutely stunning. And look, I went back and looked. The the uh, Cleveland had five hits in every game except one this season. So to to go down like this uh, was pretty surprising. And he carried a perfect game to uh, one out in the in the ninth. So. Uh, it was just a spectacular game from him. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully we'll see some more no hitters or, or perfectos this year. So it's been fun. Yeah, I enjoy it. Some people think it's like they want offense, offense, offense. We get plenty of offense. I'm good with uh, watching some great pitching once in a while. So no problem. It's like a good game. That, I, yeah, I, I exactly. don't really care. Well, you know, no hitters are always interesting. I mean, eight zip is not a good game, but seeing someone carry a no hitter for so long and actually get it is awesome regardless of the score. You know, high scoring close games are fun. Low scoring close games are fun. As long as it's not thirteen to two in the third or something like that, uh, I'm I'm enjoying it. So I well, either was, way is good by me. It was eight nothing because uh, Plesak got chased in the first, giving up six runs. We saw oh. Lance McCullers. We saw Lance McCullers get chased early by once again the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Charlie Morton gave up five early, but stuck around for five innings to make it respectable when it came to the stat column. Wheeler looked like he was on his way to get blown up, then he settled down the first day. Um, I know I'm forgetting others, but it was a brutal day for high price pitching. Dustin May is about the only one that has paid off his price tag at top. Other than that, um, Peterson shocked the world. Seven shutout innings, 10 Ks, no walks. Apparently the first left-handed pitcher to do that over seven innings, 10 Ks, no walks since 1901. So wow, um, really? Yeah, I, I, I saw that. that stat and I was I was blown away by it. I, I'm not smart enough to go double check it. I trust these people. Because Does it say the stat again? Give it to me one more time. He's the first left-handed pitcher to throw seven shutout innings with zero walks and ten strikeouts. How many strikeouts think, did Randy have in his perfect I think game? It's the, I think it's the zero. Well, that's a good question. Oh, yeah, a perfect, though. It must have been nine. So, yeah, uh, the only thing. I, I was shocked up. by it, up. too. I was shocked by it, too, because yeah, you mentioned Randy. Chris Sales had some value. I, I guess it's just like the one walk here or there. But, yeah, Randy threw a, per, a perfect game, so. Go figure. I don't know. Sandy Koufax, I would figured would have crossed that line somewhere along the way. Maybe not. But, uh, yeah, pretty surprising. Interesting night on the diamond 
is the way I'll put it once uh, again. Now, but... Ra- Randy had uh, nine innings pitched, 13 strikeouts. So Twitter, Ooh, Twitter is go... mistaken. I will have to go confront this individual after <laughs> we get done recording because <laughs> Twitter beef needs to be handled on Twitter streets. But um, right. <laughs> speak, speaking of Twitter, go check out Line Star on Twitter at Line Star app and at Line Star MLB. Go get the app in the Apple App Store and Google Play. You will not regret it. Great chats going on in there. Great tools. The lineup optimizer, the projections, all the good stuff. So go check that out. And then also rate and review the podcast on iTunes and subscribe to the YouTube page. Like it, all that good stuff. It, it's really, really cool stuff to do in a line star. Bigger and better every year, it feels like. And uh, we're just getting started. So it's going to be a fun one with line star. But similar to Wednesday, we have two slates to break down. We'll give the quick run through of the early slate. Six games on DraftKings, four games on FanDuel. For some reason, FanDuel doesn't have the uh, Mets Phillies games. It starts 10 minutes earlier than the rest of their games. Not sure. Can't there. Have yep. Not, can't have DeGrom. Have no nice things. Yeah, DeGrom. That's probably why they did it. They're like, nope, we can't have chalk DeGrom. Nope, not doing it. <laughs> not today. But, and then they don't have Seattle Baltimore because Seattle Baltimore's game one of a double hitter, seven inning game. So, Bogman, let's just get the quick run through here. You mentioned DeGrom on DK. He's 11K. He seems like a guy you kind of have to highly consider, even though the price tag is redonkulous. But you got Lance Lynn, you got Savali, you got Ian Anderson, Eflin, much better pitchers in the evening. What pitchers are you looking at on, uh, say, DK and Fandle? Yeah, man. I mean, like like you said, I- I'm always for Lynn, especially, uh, you know, a day game after a night game, especially a night game where you just got no hit. You know, I mean, Cleveland's going to be looking to want to just get out of town. So uh, I think Lance Lynn would probably be my main guy in this early slate. Um, but the 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 middle is no good. I don't want anything. I want you know. I like Pineda, but I don't want him against Boston. Uh, you know, Gonzalez, eh? It, well, they're, they're not, that's not even in one of those, right? What well, I guess the Fanduel doesn't have them, nope. right? No Degrom in that one either. So I guess you're kind of stuck between uh, Lynn or Savale. I also like uh, Ian Anderson a little bit against the Marlins. So those would be my pitchers in this early slate. Yeah, if you DeGrom. can't get Degrom, if you're on DK, yeah. take Degrom. Obviously. Yeah, if you can pay, if you can pay for Degrom, you go pay for Degrom. It's 11k, it's steep, but he's worth every penny more often than not. But you mentioned Lynn and Savali, like both of those guys in that game. Uh, Lynn, we know he's a workhorse coming off a shutout of his own. His last time out looked like a beast. Um, and this Cleveland offense, I know it's simple to say they stink, but they're not like they're not bad, bad, but they're not great by any means. So I don't mind Lynn getting the strikeouts and going. Savali is definitely in play, but keep in mind, I saw Tim Anderson's coming back on Thursday. So that lineup gets a little stronger there. I still like Savali a lot. I think he's going to get overlooked if you're paying up so you get some savings there. But um, Ian Anderson is a nice cheaper option, 8K on DK, 86 on FanDuel. Nice leverage play there. Zach Eflin is a good turner play, only on DK, though, not on FanDuel. And then if you're looking for an SP2, because I wouldn't play him so much on FanDuel at 75, but uh, Trevor Rogers at 66, lots of strikeout upside against Atlanta. Might get hit around a bit. Lots of strikeout upside, though, for a punt. Yeah, he's been that. great. Uh, he's been great so far this year. My my only worry about Rodgers is uh, pitch count and, and him getting yanked early. So that that's why I didn't mention him before because I think he's had two games in his career where he's gone six innings or more. So, yeah. uh, and I think that those are both right at six innings. So, uh, but but I, I like Anderson. Lynn probably going to be my guy if I don't get to Grom or feel like I can't afford him. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad move. And even if you're playing cash, if you just want to put Savali and Lynn in the same cash lineup, I don't hate it on DraftKings. It's not the end of the world. Just hope for a low-scoring game. Um, when you're talking about bats, though, we, we named a lot of pitchers, like way more pitchers than I want to name when we preview the main slate. But um, there's actually some some nice bats to target, too. What, what are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, you know, just looking, if you're looking for a little – uh, PVB here, uh, Harper versus DeGrom is a good one. He's 11 for 39, hitting 282 with two bombs. Uh, Andrew Knapp, if he is going to be catching this game, which I don't know if he is or not, but he's four for nine against DeGrom with a double and a triple and a homer. So all four of his hits are extra bases against DeGrom. He must just see him well. But uh, on the other side of that, more likely buys for you guys. Uh, Michael Conforto, 7 for 26. That's 269, but three homers and two doubles. So five of the seven hits 
off of Eflin have been for extra bases. Uh, then uh, Pete Alonso, three for nine with a bomb off of Eflin. Uh, Kevin Pillar, three for six with a double and a homer. Should he get in the lineup? Uh, other PVB stuff, John Bertie against Ian Anderson is four for five. So hitting 800 with a double. That's a nice one uh, in the Boston and uh, Minnesota game here. Miguel Sano, three for 10 in his career off of Richards. Uh, nine of 27 for Donaldson, who is back in the lineup. Thank God for all my season long shares of this guy always getting hurt. Uh, but then uh, Sander Bogart's nine for 29 off of Richards. And then Moncada is five for 11 in his career off of Savale. Jose Ramirez, two for eight with a double and a homer. So both of his hits off of Lynn have been for extra bases. So those, those are the guys that I'm looking at just in a PVB uh, value for the early slate. When it comes to stacking a couple angles I'm looking at, I don't mind targeting Richards at all with Minnesota, Garrett Richards that is. So you can jump on that train. Same with in that game, I don't mind stacking up Boston versus Pineda. Boston's bats are quietly heating up. So I think that's an intriguing uh, – uh, Boston has won nine straight games, Bogman. Nine. Have they really? Oh, my God. They're, Boston, they're the best team in the AL East right now. Boston wow. Minnesota. Not yeah. what we expected to see at no. all, especially getting uh, beat – on opening day by the Orioles that, you know, that kind of sets the tone, but yeah, they're, they're definitely improving. So yeah. So De I Devers Minnesota is starting to hit, you know, that yep. I think that's a big part of it. De Devers starting to hit Verdugo looks real good. He had a great game today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, those, those pieces, they might be streaky, but ride them while they're hot for sure. Yep. Minnesota, Boston in play. And then I, I want to target Matt Harvey with Seattle so bad. I'm so angry. I tweeted out on Wednesday that mother nature has ruined three days of me attacking Baltimore and or Seattle in Camden Yards. Now all he gets a seven inning doubleheader game on the early slate. This is like crime, but um, I still don't mind targeting Harvey. And then the last thing I'll mention, San Diego versus Mitch Heller, maybe. I like Pittsburgh versus Paddock because I'd go to target Paddock over and over again. I think he's yep. Paddock's extremely been overrated. It's like yeah. Colin Moran, Polanco, and Deep on uh, Wednesday. You get a lot. You get a lot of Phillip value. Evans Phillip is Evans. Hitting. Yep. Yeah. You get a lot of value in that game. So I think that's a sneakier angle to take. Like we've seen Detroit and Miami going off. These bad teams can still be fantasy productive. So don't ignore them. Absolutely but, uh, right. Any other thoughts on this early slate before we head to the five game main slate? No, I think I'm ready to head towards the main course here. <laughs> Let's do it. Five game main slate. We'll kick it off. Arizona at Washington. We got Merrill Kelly versus Patrick Corbin. Over under is eight and a half. And before we go too much deeper, pitching is very rough. You're going to have to take some stands and maybe swallow your pride in a few spots. But for me, Bogman, I'm not taking either pitcher in this game. Do you have interest in Corbin or Kelly? Uh, I, I got. I got to be honest, man. It's it's hard for me to look at this pitching, especially. I'm just jealous of the early slate. Uh, you know, uh, but but. Uh, no, I don't want Merrill Kelly. He's been rough to start the year, even though I am excited about him. You know, uh, he's looked good for a guy that just had thoracic outlet syndrome because that's kind of been, you know, it's been a career ender. That's why Chris Archer is a reliever now, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, Corbin hasn't looked good either. So I want bats in this game. I do not want pitching. Well, speaking of bats in this game, uh, who you like him? Because obviously, both guys struggle. Lefties can get to Kelly. Um, Soto's expensive, but maybe worth it. Uh, what are you looking at here? Yeah, yeah Soto, I mean, is obviously one of going to be one of the top buys today. Six thousand forty four hundred. Uh, you know that that's affordable for what he brings you. A uh, Trey Turner fifty eight and four thousand, I think, is a good value. Uh, Robles, let, let's not forget just how ridiculously terrible the uh, Diamondbacks are at stopping runners. I mean, Ramon Laureano, I believe has, you know, got four steals against the uh, D backs in their series the other day. So Robles, if he gets on 36 and 2,800 should be on the move. Uh, LaCastro has been hitting 3,300 and 2,500. Uh, Josh Bell is pretty cheap. Still coming off the COVID list, 3,600 and 3,400. Kyle Schwarber is expensive, but Josh Bell is cheap. Uh, and then Eduardo Escobar, 4,100 and 4,000. He, he still got a hot bat, even though it's cooling down a little bit. Uh, still got a hot bat. So those are the bats I like for this game. Yeah, no, I, I like the bell call. He's very, very affordable. Um, Robles, they moved him down to nine on Wednesday. So keep an eye on that. He's still in play at his price tag at nine, but obviously yeah. he loses a ton of value from when he was leading off. So that's something to keep in mind. And you mentioned the steals, which is a very good thing because it makes guys like Trey Turner to me worth even more than they're actually priced. Because all it takes is getting on, steal a couple bags, and score a run. You're in double digits. Like It's almost like you get home run. 
So right, right. It, 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 it's real big there. The other thing I'll ask you, you being the D backs guy with uh, with Walker at left starting for Washington, Wyatt Matheson, any love for this man? He's 22 on DK and basically the minimum on Fandle. Yeah, look, if he's in the lineup uh, and you're going to pay up for a pitcher, which you should here, and Urias is going to be, I believe, the most expensive on the slate, and you know he's probably the one you should pay up for because the rest I look at and I just do not like, really. So, um, yeah, uh, if Matheson is getting the start, then sure. Um, you just, with what... Tory has been doing with the lineup this year. Uh, I'm just not sure, you know, yeah. so I don't know if he's going to be in there. I don't know if Van Meter is going to be in at second because he's been hitting well. Uh, Josh Rojas has been a total loser this year, but he might hit lead off out of nowhere again. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what Tory's doing with the lineup, uh, quite yet. So, uh, but if Matheson's in there, he can hit a little, I watched him in the spring. So there's a reason he made the squad. All right, just curious about that one. Let's head to Tampa Bay. Rangers at the Rays wrapping up their series there. Jordan Lyles versus Rich Hill. Jordan Lyles should be an opener. He might go five, most likely three or four. Then you got Rich Hill, who who knows how long he's going to go for. Um, Overrunners, eight and a half. The crazy thing is I usually would never target Rich Hill, but he's 77 on FanDuel. And on DK, he's 9K, which is pricey. But with pitching as bad as it is, he's at least on my short list. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's not many uh, Texas bats I want here in this game either. So I, I got to be with you. I got to be with you on Rich Hill, which um, I mean, how has Rich Hill not gotten like a, a commercial for uh, fixing his eye bags, right? Like um, <laughs> <laughs> he needs some. Uh, I mean, I got him. You can see him on, on the the terrible reception that I have here. I got him bad, but I don't have him nearly as bad as Rich Hill. But anyway, yeah, I mean, he's probably my second or third favorite uh, pitcher in this whole group here because um, there's just not a lot to offer. So, yeah, Rich Hill is definitely in play. Now, we, we talk about the bats here. Tampa Bay has let people down day after day after day, which usually means good things because ownership will go down. But – Short slate, Jordan Lyles is Jordan Lyles. I still expect ownership to be big. What bats are you targeting on what should be a good Tampa Bay stack once again? Yeah, I mean, it is Lyles, right? So like, yeah. like you said, we're probably needing to go back to the well here. Um, in DK, if you need a catcher, Mike Zanino, uh, pretty good against Lyles. Um, two for six in, in his career. So that's something. I mean, there's barely any PVB data for either of the early or afternoon slates today. Um, it's just a weird day in, in, in that respect. But Randy Arena is 5,200, 4,000. We saw Brandon Lau hit a bomb tonight, 4,500, 2,800 on, on FanDuel. So I'm going to be snapping him up in FanDuel for sure. Um, Austin Meadows, 47 and 36. Joey Wendell, 47 and 34. Like you said, um, you know, they've been a little disappointing, but – uh, jo uh, Jordan Lyles could definitely be a slump buster. Yeah, he definitely could. And a couple of values I want to mention. Adolis Garcia was called up two games ago. He's gotten hits in both games so far. He's batting cleanup. He's 2K on both sites for Texas. I have no problem with that. He batted cleanup versus lefty today. He'll probably do it versus Rich Hill at 2K. He's worth the price of admission. He had a big like basis clearing triple on Wednesday. So And he had a monster spring with power. If you look at his 2019 minor league numbers, power and speed, so Dulles Garcia is 2K on both sites. Charlie Culberson's cheap too, and he's playing every day. So if you're looking for value because you're paying up for pitching, I don't hate it. If you just want a one-off with Adolis Garcia, I'm actually a big fan of that still at 2K on this slate. All right, let's head to Kansas City. Blue, uh, Blue Jays at Royals. We don't have a total on this one because the Jays are figuring out their pitching situation. It looks like it's going to be Tanner Rourke, who is not on FanDuel yet, but he is on DK and he's a wonderful, wonderful price of 6700 You have Jacob Junis at 64 on DK. On FanDuel, Junis is 6 k Any interest on the pitchers? No, no, not not uh, not in this game. Not with the way uh, Toronto's been hitting and, and the way Kansas City can hit. So uh, that's going to be a no from me, dog. Yeah, it's this is how bad the slate is. Uh, if you want to take a flyer on Junis at 64 on DK as an SP2, I'm in. Just because his improved pitch mix, more strikeouts, It'll offset the five runs he probably gives up. Um, I just want a minimal damage here because we have to play two pitchers. So yeah. Junis would be my punt on the slate, but it doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. Um, what bats are you using on this one? 
I mean, most of them, to be honest with you. But uh, Marcus Simeon uh, is a pretty good price, uh, 5,300 uh, in his career against Junis. He is five for 12 with the triple and a homer. So a little PVB data, but, you know, uh, Vlad Jr., 5,100, 4,200. Bo Bichette uh, coming off his two homer game the other day, 4,900, 3,800. Carlos Santana, I believe, hit a bomb today, 4,200, 2,700. On FanDuel is a good one. Uh, Dozier's back in that lineup, 3,600, 2,300. Andrew Benintendi, 3,500, 2,500. Still cheap, hasn't started hitting yet, but also uh, maybe a uh, lefty righty matchup here with Riley Telez at 2,900 and 2,100. I-, I think could be a decent one. Yeah, I definitely look for the value on this game. A lot of people will go to Toronto because of the Junus matchup, just and they, they are Toronto. We love to play them in fantasy, but I do like the Royal side, like you mentioned. Wit's expensive, but you have Salvi. Uh, Santana, like you said, swinging the bat well. So I like those guys there uh, as a starting point and then see what else they put in the lineup. But you mentioned Ben Intendi. He's not hitting the time, but he's been getting on base and stealing like two or three straight games. So that does add up over time, which we can definitely enjoy in our wonderful fantasy world. All right, two more games to go on this five-game evening slate. We have the Oakland Athletics taking on the Detroit Tigers and wonderful Oco Coliseum. Hopefully the plumbing's working there. Uh, we got Tariq Skubal <laughs> versus Sean Manaya. Over under is only eight and a half on this one. It surprises me. Two pitchers that I just tilt all in. Like I, I think Skubal's good, but he just hasn't shown it yet. Manaya, I never trust as far as I can throw him. Do you like either pitchers in this one? I I, I kind of like Manaya. You know, look, we we had him uh, last week. Every once in a while, he's good for uh, a good game. And and the last time I said I like him, but I don't like him in this scenario. I believe they're playing. Uh, oh Houston. God, I can't remember. Yeah, that's Houston. who it was. It was Houston. And so I didn't want to mess with him against the pre COVID Houston Astros lineup. But, uh, now that they're playing against the Tigers, uh, look, the Tigers are kind of hot, which is another reason why I don't really particularly care for any of the pitching outside of maybe Urias in this entire slate, but you got to take somebody else somewhere. And my second guy, I think is going to be Sean Maniah today. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't disapprove it because it's such a weird slate. You gotta, you're gonna have to take some gambles, especially on the pitching side. There's just no way around that. Um, I, I, I like the Tigers bats, but unfortunately, we're losing discounts. Uh, Ramos is up to 41 from his usual 33, 34. Candelario's up to 4K. These are still worth playing, but like Badu's 39 is not bad. I do like Ronaldo Nunez at 38. And these are all DK prices because Fandle's always cheap. Uh, but Ro- uh, Robbie Grossman at 33 still has some appeal. If you check out their lineup, they'll, they'll they'll look cheap. But you can make arguments for both sides. I do like Renato Nunez for sure as one value. What do you like for bats this game? Yeah, I like Chapman, 4,300 and 3,900, I think, is a nice buy. Mark Canna hitting leadoff at 4,100 and 3,000 is also a good one. I mean, it's hard to... It's hard to keep Badu out of your lineup until he cools down, right? I mean, yep. you just kind of have to keep going with him. 3,900, 3,200 for him. Like uh, Candelario in a righty lefty matchup, 4,800. Uh, Jed Lowry's been hitting a little bit, 3,600, 2,800. So those are the, and, and Loriano with all the stolen bases, eight so far, 3,300. 3, 3,800. He's cheaper on DK than he's on FanDuel, which is surprising. surprising. So he's definitely going to be a buy for me on DK today. So Ramon Laureano at 3,800. I like a lot. Yeah. I like that Laureano Lowry, very cheap one, two punch there for the A's. I have no problem with that. And the thing with the Tigers to always also keep an eye on Mazzara left Wednesday's game with an injury. So Jacoby Jones came in, he'll be cheap if he's in the lineup, but at the same time that might move Badu to the middle of the lineup. So that's true. Keep, keep, keep an eye on that when Detroit releases their lineup, uh, could get fun out there in Oco last game of the night. Colorado Rockies at the Los Angeles Dodgers. Totals eight on this game. You know what's really funny, Bogman? We have such bad pitching, but the totals are eight or eight and a half. There's no high totals. Like it's yeah. bizarro world. Bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like on paper. Hey, it's there getaway be some day for a lot of these teams. So, you know, yeah. that that's we want a quicker. Sometimes the umpires call a little bit quicker. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, yeah. it's a, a, a close play is an out. And, you know, replay hasn't been helping anybody recently so they don't really care about it so i i think that's part of it and um you know uh, some some of these teams just haven't looked great at the dish so no, um, not at all. I, I think that's definitely part of it too yeah not at all but this dodgers rockies game you got your rice at 10-1 on dk is 96 on Fanduel. that fan price uh is outstanding like you just kind of plug that in and eat the chalk unless you want to be really really different but if you're playing one lineup 
to me, just eat the Urias and move on. On DK, it's pricey, but with all things considered, you just eat this one the best you can, too. Are you on the same page there? Yeah, I mean, find cheap bats today and pay up for Urias. That, that's yep. uh, that's how I see it. Yep, that makes the most sense to me. What bats do you like in this game? Because Gomber, as much as I like to target him, he's been good. Still doesn't mean I'm not going to use Dodgers bats, but he's been good. Well, you know, I think you can say that about uh, a lot of Rockies pitchers outside of Coors. You know what I True. mean? Is they're much, much better on the road, way more effective, of course, because they're not having to play at elevation. But I, I always kind of like Gomber as a, a pitcher coming out of the Cardinals system, and I was kind of pissed that he was in this deal for Nolan Arenado because I wanted to see him get a shot to crack that Cardinals rotation. Obviously, uh, he's good enough to make the Rockies rotation, which doesn't mean a lot for us. And I'm not going to be picking him today, but I will pick on him. Uh, I mean, look, you can buy pretty much any Dodgers bat you want here. 5,900, 4,600 for bets. Seager, 5,600, 3,700. On DK, don't know why uh, we're getting the big discount for him. Uh, Justin Turner went yard last night, 5,500, 3,800. Um, and then Max Muncy uh, is cheap at 5,300, 3,200 on FanDuel. Weird prices for yeah. some of these Dodgers bats on FanDuel. But you keep pointing it out every single uh, show, Bub. Uh, Gavin Lux, 3,900, 2,300. Why? Yeah. Why the big difference? And CJ CJ Crone here is a nice cheap option, 2,300, and 2,400. So uh, there are lots of bats to like in this game. Yeah, lots to like. The one thing I'll throw on in this game before we wrap up and head head on out of here, on a, such a small slate, you like, people think you have to get really, really crazy different, and sometimes you do depending on the size of the tournament you're in. But I will say with Gomber and his strikeout upside, He's intriguing as an SP2 on DK just for the fact everyone's going to want to roster Dodgers bats for good yeah. reasons. But you look at Gomber's stuff this year. He's still on a pitch mix change. The strikeouts are there. And you look at like what even John Gray did on Wednesday night. He hit three runs in like five or six innings. That doesn't crush you. And if he goes and gets five or six Ks at $6,900, that's still a good start. So that, that plays and it gives you leverage on the field. So if you want to be chalky elsewhere, that's fine. So I just want to throw that out there as, as a tournament tactic, one would say, when you're building your lineups. All right, Bogman, your top cash game. I guess I'm not going to say your ice is the top pitcher on the slate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who, who, who are you stacking? Who's your favorite stacks on this late slate? I mean, it's still the Dodgers against the Rockies. I know to be contrarian, uh, maybe yeah. go against that, but also Toronto against uh, Tampa Bay or Toronto against Kansas City and uh, Tampa Bay against the Rangers. Probably Tampa Bay against the Rangers more than anything. Yeah, Dodgers is obviously good one, but I like Washington. Detroit and Arizona, like in that order. That's kind of where I'm looking at right now. I think with those three, I can be different enough and play all the Urias I want and not care about things. So Washington, Detroit, and Arizona, I'm, I love targeting Kelly. So that's just going to happen. And I always target Mania, so we'll see if I live and die with that one. Time will tell. <laughs> but um, everyone's waiting for us to hit a home run or get a home run, Bogman. So let's do it. Let's win some free swag. Let's head. Let's get a good jump start into the weekend here. You know, It's only Thursday. We'll win Thursday. We'll win Friday. We'll get people pumped up. Who's your home run call for the night? Uh, give me Vlad Jr. Uh, I'm going to go Vlad, with Vlad oh. Jr. tonight. Yep, Vladito, 5,100, 4,200 off of Jacob Junis. G give me give me Vladdy to go yard. Vladdy to go yard. I like that. I like it a lot. That's not the most popular of ones because people say, oh, he can't get the ball off the ground. I don't care. So I, I like that quite a bit. It'll be a laser. Um, yes, it'll be a laser. I like I like your style there in, in Kansas City. Uh, for me, I'm going back to the well, man. I just have to. I hate Merrill Kelly when it comes to pitching. Give me Juan Soto. Juan Soto's going yard. Like I'm telling you, I've watched his at-bats. He's hitting everything so well. Like The home runs are coming in bunches pretty soon. So give me Juan yeah. Soto. It's coming. But uh, well, it's finally uh, you picking against my D backs and not me picking against my D backs. I like it. <laughs> it's okay. I got your back box. That's what we're friends. It's all good. <laughs> we got this. But um, that'll wrap us up for Thursday. Don't forget, everybody, check out Line Star on Twitter at Line Star app at Line Star MLB. Uh, go check out the app in the Apple App Store and Google Play. Rate and review the podcast on iTunes. And go check us out on YouTube. All of the business stuff right there for you in a package. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pediatric Bogman's at Bogman Sports. We'll be back with you tomorrow with your Friday preview. But for now, good luck, everybody. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Line Star app on deck podcast. Download Line Star app from the App Store or go to linestarapp.com for all your DFS baseball needs. 
If you love the On Deck podcast, support KC Bubba and Bogman by rating and subscribing. Good luck.